Hi class. Today I am going to be showing you how to do a practice state competency exam. I wanted to explain how it works and, how the, and show you just a basic flow of how the exam goes. So one of the things they're going to do is when you first come in for state competency, they're going to get you signed in. You're going to have to have your driver's license and your social security card and they're going to get you checked in to the testing site. Once you get checked in, you are checked in. You aren't going to be able to leave and come back. You have to stay until you're done with your testing. They will um, be checking your IDs, they'll thumbprint you, and then you'll be set to go. They'll start you off with your written test, and after your written test, as you finish your written test, they're going to give you a number. As your number comes up, they will call you into the skills area. You're going to sign in again, make sure your name's correct, you'll sign in, and then you'll get started on your skills set. When you sign in, there is going to be some forms right here. So there will be multiple forms laying out, and you're going to pick one. You are not going to know what your five skills are going to be until you pick that form. Everyone gets five skills, and you will get 30 minutes to complete those five skills. So I'm going to grab one, and I would actually hand it to my evaluator. And my evaluator would, um, she'll, what she's going to ask me before she even shows me these five skills is she's going to let me know that the supplies that I'm going to need for any skill today is going to be set out on the table. She's gonna let me look at the bed. She's gonna let me see if I know how the bed goes up and down, how the rails go up and down, how it locks. I can play with all of that beforehand. And then she's going to give me my paper. When I look at the, my instructions, it says my skills are going to be hand washing, which everybody starts with hand washing, counts and records respirations, performs passive range of motion for one knee and one ankle, assists to ambulate using a transfer belt, and provides peri care for a female. Now, I am expected to do them in that order, and you always want to make sure you pay attention to the little blurb that comes underneath it. It'll tell you for respirations, for instance, I must count for one minute. It tells me to amb when I ambulate that the evaluator is going to tell me to walk them a certain length and then come back. So always make sure you read the little blurb that comes right underneath that skill. I'm expected to do them in this order, and, um, and I have to, once I complete one skill, then I can go on to the next. I don't have to memorize this. I can set it down and refer back to it as I go along. The other thing I want to mention is, is while you're on a skill, so let's say when I was doing a skill, I forgot to pull the privacy curtain, um, but I caught it while I was still on that skill. I'm just going to say, oh, I'd like to correct myself. I, for to I forgot to tell you I would have pulled my privacy curtain, and they'll give you credit for it. But once I'm done with that skill and I move to the next skill, then that previous skill is completed. Okay, I can't go back at that point. So my first skill is going to be hand washing. So I'm going to set my card down so I can refer back to it. Now for hand washing, the first thing I like to do is introduce myself to my patient or my client. So I'm going to knock. Um, Mrs. Cutler, can you tell me your full name? Carol Cutler. And can I look at your ID band? Mm -hmm. My name is Kelly Neal and I'm going to be your student CNA today. And I'm just going to go wash my hands and then we'll get started with your care. Sounds okay. good, thank you. So now I'm going to come over to the sink. Now, they have multiple sinks when you go to the testing site, and some of them will have foot controls, and some will be the traditional style. I want to just show you right here the foot control one. Your foot, feet control are here. And so that, those are really nice because I can just let the water turn off as I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull my sleeves up and my watch up, and I'm going to use warm water, and I'm going to get my hands wet. Now when I'm washing my hands, I want to make sure that I do not touch the inside of the sink and that I do not lean up against the sink. I'm gonna get lots of soap here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a little more. Now, if I was using a traditional style sink, this water would be running the entire time that I was washing my hands. Since I'm using a foot control one, obviously I can let it shut off. So I'm gonna keep my fingers below my elbows at all times and I'm gonna be scrubbing my hands and you're gonna make sure that you're scrubbing all surfaces of your fingers, your hands, the backs of your hands, and they are going to turn a timer on you, okay? And I'm not, I'm not soaping up underneath the running water, I am soaping up outside of the water. I'm gonna come up on my wrists, at least two fingers up on my wrists. And once I think, they will have a timer on that I'm doing this for at least 20 seconds, so once I think my 20 seconds is up, I do it just a little bit longer just to make sure. 
They don't care if you scrub for five minutes, but if you do it for 19 seconds, you just failed state competency because that is your critical step. So once I'm done with my 20 seconds, now I'm gonna scrub each of my fingernails. Okay, that doesn't actually count in your 20 seconds. So you're gonna scrub your nails. You can tell them you're gonna get all your fingers, fingernails here. Now I'm gonna put my water back on. Again, I'm still keeping my hand, my fingers below my wrist. I'm gonna make sure I get all my soap off. And make sure you just kind of look at that back side of it. And now we're gonna grab our paper towels and we're gonna pat dry starting with the fingertips and coming up. And this will go in the garbage, which I do not have a garbage, so that's my garbage right there. I'm gonna make sure I'm completely dry. Now, if I was still, if I was using a traditional style sink, now I would take my paper towel and I would turn off my hot and my cold water. So now I am done with that skill. So now I'm gonna come back over to get my next skill. And my next skill says, I can always refer back to my sheet, it says counts and records respirations. Counts the respirations and records or writes the results on the recording sheet in candidate results box. Counts for one minute. For testing purposes, you may explain to the client that you will be counting the respirations. So I'm gonna come in. Carol, it's me, Kelly, again. Hi. I don't actually have to check the ID band again. I do that the first time with my initial introduction. And I don't have to wash my hands before I count respirations because they're looking at it as I just washed them before I start. So now I'm gonna look at respirations. So I'm gonna tell her I'm gonna be counting your respirations. Okay. And generally when I look at respirations, I check the upper chest, along here, or the stomach to see where I can see it best. I'm gonna go ahead and you will need a watch with a digital, um, with a, um, I'm sorry, with a regular second hand on it, um, not a digital watch and you cannot use a smart watch for state competency testing. I unfortunately didn't bring one, but I can see my watch, my clock right there, so that's why I'm gonna look. So when I get to the 12, or here, we'll start here. Now that last breath, she took her full breath in, but it wasn't completely exhaled, pretty close to it. I actually probably would have thrown it in there and counted it as 13, but your evaluator might not have. But that's one of the reasons they give you two, two points um, variation there from what you, and your what you and your evaluator will get for that. I would then have my recording sheet that will already have my name on it. Everybody gets hand washing and everybody gets one recording skill. Your recording skill, it says blood pressure, um, pulse, respirations, urine output, or weight. So I would mark respirations, candidate results, I would write 13 and I would hand it to my evaluator. Your evaluator will not tell you if you were correct or not, You're just they're just gonna put what they got and you'll move on to your next skill. So then I'm gonna tell my evaluator, and I apologize, see I'm gonna self-correct myself like I told you we could. Before I'm allowed to record, I actually have to wash my hands. So I'm gonna tell my evaluator I would self-correct. I'm going to wash my hands first. I'm gonna make sure my person has their call light and that they're in a comfortable position and the bed's low. And now I'm going to record my results. And then I complete my skill. So anytime you think you've made a mistake or you realize, oh, I did that out of order, so long as you're on that skill, they don't mind if you correct yourself. Okay, now we're gonna to go to the next skill which is passive range of motion for one knee and one ankle. Okay. So I'm gonna knock. 
Carol, it's me, Kelly, again. Hi, Is it Kelly. time to do your leg exercises? Is that okay? Oh, that sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Now, for this skill, I would want to, again, I don't have to wash my hands because I finished the last skill with hand washing. So I'm going to pull my privacy curtain. And I'm not going to bring it all the way around since we're trying to film. I'm going to go ahead and bring her bed up to a good working height for me. Now for state competency, you are not required to use good body mechanics, but I, I always hate to see my students practice with poor body mechanics. So if you practice over and over with poor body mechanics, you tend to do that in your real life practice. So I'm gonna raise the bed up and then I'm gonna put her in a flat position, in a supine position. When you're doing range of motion to the knee and the ankle, you wanna put them flat. Now some of these newer beds, you'll see her knees are a little bit notched up. Um, you would want to make sure you put that down as well. So I have pulled my privacy curtain. I do not need to wear gloves for this skill, but I am going to be touching her feet. So if that grosses you out, they don't mark you down if you do wear gloves, but it is not required. So I'm going to only uncover the body part I'm working on. And I'm going to tell my evaluator one thing that um, I would like you to try to get in the habit of doing as you're going through your skills is tell the evaluator what you're doing as you're doing it. Your evaluator is trying to watch their sheet and watch you at the same time and they're, did you do that step? Yes. Did you do that step? Yes. They have the same skills that are in your book is what they're grading you on, either yes or no. You did it or you didn't do it. So if they're looking in on their sheet and they miss something, if they see you do it or they hear you say it, they give you credit for it. So get in the habit as you're practicing for state competency of saying what you're doing as you're doing it. Okay. So I pulled my privacy curtain, I put her flat. I'm gonna uncover the leg I'm working on and I only have to do range of motion to one knee and one ankle. I'm gonna tell her, Carol, please let me know if anything hurts. If it hurts, we'll stop and we'll let the nurse know. Okay, thank you. So okay. now I'm gonna support underneath the knee and I'm gonna support the ankle. And I'm gonna come and I'm gonna bring, and I'm looking for this, so you can see it here. I guess I should uncover a little bit more so you can see her on the video. I'm looking for this full bend of the knee right here and I'm gonna come back down. And I have to do this at least three times for state competency. I'm moving the leg gently. Okay, you doing all right? Yes. Okay, right. so now we're gonna do the ankle. So the ankle, I wanna support the ankle. I don't want the heel to be rubbing back and forth on the bed. And I'm gonna take her toes and I'm gonna kind of point her toes down and then I'm gonna come back. And I'm going to go each direction at least three times. Okay. Does that feel good? That does. Very nice. Thank you. Kelly. Okay. So then I'm going to cover her back up. I'm going to put her bed back down. Would you like your head of your bed up, or would you do you want yeah, to stay just flat? Little, please. Thank you. So I have to put the whole bed down flat since I raised it up. I'll raise her head of her bed up for whatever she wants for comfort. I'm going to make sure that she can reach her call light. Thank you. And pull my privacy curtain back. And then I'm going to tell my evaluator I would wash my hands. Okay, we're going to stop our tape here and continue on part two for our last two skills.